AMD fans, you should be a little bit excited, but also very skeptical on this newer update. It's been pretty cool to test out. We're going to be looking at two different segments today, a little bit of a special for most of the returning community members and brand new people alike. We'll be looking at the Windows 2000 H2 November update as well alongside with the 20.11.1 that coincides with there on top of the brand new 20.11.2 patch notes benchmarks and all that fun stuff is up next my name is Mac here at the MacGyver 7 channel and today we're going to be doing some AMD related news Before we jump over to the patch notes, one thing I wanted to point out is there's a brand new 6000 series. I tried to get one this morning and unfortunately it was sold out in seconds. It was bad. Uh, but if you did get one, leave a comment down below. I want to know about probably the people that really wanted these cards. Did the gamers get the cards or did the scalpers win yet again? Unfortunately, I'm thinking PlayStation 5's RTX cards and RX cards are just, well... They're hot economies in this market, but we're going to go ahead and look at our patch notes. And one of the funner things that I did notice around this time was that when we look at the driver support, we have a brand new standard. The recommended now is 20.9.1. So a lot of the fun things that we'll be seeing on top of there will be built upon there. The 20.4.2, which was an old school standard, which still does stand up. But for the newer cards, that's going to be the more applicable one. Uh, now, looking at for as far as our release notes, let's pull them up. So some of the bigger things we come into is the addition of the 6800 series, as well as the World of Warcraft Shadowlands support and added to the portions of Vulcan support as well. The fragment shattering point of uh, rates. So you're going to get a bigger shading rate for as far as what's going to be happening there. The extension that's going to provide it per frame rate, the multiple pixels, all that fun stuff. Now, fixed issues is probably what we should be looking at for as far as the more of the concerns, because last time there was barely any. It was just literally a support patch. It was kind of weird. Um, but what they enabled for the recording on the desktop and the instant replay that may cause a pitching or a stutter for the full screen and playback on some configurations. Um, they also, the custom fan settings that we're not retaining after waking and sleeping from the RX 500 series and the graphics production. The graphics glitching may occur in the 500 series yet again, with the idle or the desktop has multiple higher refresh on the Radeon FreeSync display connected. On top of that, the disabling of the performance metric overlays while in game can sometimes cause the frame freeze and stutter. Um, lowering the unexpected portion of the 5700, we have a performance in the experiencing portions of the product inside of the Sword 7. So that's kind of a specific gaming fix right there, which is kind of cool. The mouse corruption that experienced in the changing of the graphics and Vulcan API on top of the serious points of SAM 4, and then also the corruption in the visible portions of the surface of Far Cry Primal, old school one for the 5000 series graphics card. No issue that they still have there. It comes down to bright, flickering screens, intermediate portions, down to just Metris Exodus. You have like Metros, one of the very funner ones. Crisis Remastered also makes the list. A lot of games are making the list. Um, some games are experiencing some RDNA portion not cooperating with Netflix on top of some other things that will be listed down below. So if you want to go ahead and check these things out, they will definitely be there for as far as what the known issues are. And some first pointers for as far as what you can actually see for the workarounds for those but let's go ahead and look at some benchmarks i think we're already kind of halfway through this portion of the episode it's about time for the fun part so let's go ahead and pull some stuff up we're going to start with the 2000 and h to just for that portion of looking at what windows has given us for performance in the last driver which the last driver personally i thought was pretty decent 20.11.1 was pretty good in my opinion so looking at the framework and what they build up on top of that, which you have your circumvents which come into gameplay, we are looking at a huge portion in the hardware accelerator, and it stayed too very consistent when we, I looked into the testing of the 20.11.1 versus the 20.11.2. It was pretty cool. So I mean, there's a lot of cool stuff ahead for benchmarks, but so far, the new circumvent works really well. So you're going to want to update that Windows if you're already using that. It's not bad. It's pretty smooth. Taking a closer look at Extreme with DirectX 11 as we're doing our fire strikes, you can see that again, it definitely does have an advantage inside of the normal fire strike with Extreme. It will run into some complications, um, but not that major of a deal, to be honest, as well as Ultra. 
also slides into some very interesting scores, almost tying some stuff at certain points, like literally within a few points on with the hardware accelerator on. DirectX 12 shows some pretty promising things almost, but there are some definite fallbacks, unfortunately, when you don't have that hardware accelerator on. And then you start to see what they start to optimize it for with Windows. You start to see 4K improvement on the DirectX 12. So very interesting thing. Just as a mid-segment already for the 2000H2, it seems like, A, it works really good with Fire Strike. It doesn't work really good for as far as the more upper-end portion of DirectX 11. For DirectX 12, it doesn't work for the good bottom-end portion, but it works really, really well for the upper-end portion for 4K. Very interesting, but let's look at 20.11.2. The questions you guys and gals should be asking, should I install this? Let's take a look before we make that final decision. Straight out the gate, it's looking pretty bad. If you look at what ends up happening with DirectX 11, and especially what we just tested out with the 20.h2, and you can see how consistent that is with the hardware accelerator on and off, orange being on, and it pretty much slaughters it with the old school update. Now, this doesn't mean that they won't get a circumvent and we won't be seeing some cooler stuff come up for Windows and there might be some fixes that it do some improvements. That's what mid-patch notes will run for. Um, and I'll be a little bit more with haste this time of getting them out. But if you do happen to like, have switched over and you are experiencing DirectX 11 issues with some of the gameplay, turn off the hardware accelerator and see if that doesn't make it life a little bit easier and better for FPS. But if you want more higher settings, then you are in the right place for this update. Yes, I know, this is strange. AMD paid more attention to the like overclock room and the bandwidth of what they introduced. And this probably has a lot to do with the 6000 series introduction, uh, just because they're really good for like um, the overclocking and kind of hitting these things, but they're not good with pushing the boundaries. So they're probably hitting the sweet spot with what's going down for as far as the technology is. Drivers are normally just like on the same plateau for the most part. And you can see right over here, 20.11.1 doesn't even stand a chance and when it comes down to like more of the portions. Now with Ultra, let's see if it sings the same story. And this was just interesting. A dead tie with the 20.11.2 with itself. So it doesn't matter. You can talk it off and on all day. It's going to be the same. Now with the 20.11, again, it, there's a topple difference. And well, unfortunately, it just doesn't meet the standard for having 4K. And that's huge. With that amount of pointage and pushing forward, you can tell that they optimized the driver for 4K performance. Pushing past DirectX 11, DirectX 12 shows some promising portions even in the very low portal of the 1080p. So the low totem pole is not going to actually end up looking as bad compared to where you take a hit with DirectX 11 where it's just basic 1080p, you might end up with some performance issues. You shouldn't be doing that, but somehow that's what they tuned it for. And then this just blew me away. I mean... They really drove 4K home with this driver. So I guess what you should be asking yourself, should I install this? Yes, if you're playing 4K, if you're playing more heavier settings on like your graphics card and you have the room in order to run those for your GPU, then absolutely, this probably would be a pretty sweet driver for yourself. Um, now, if you're just a basic 1080p person and you're just trying to like, you know, play your games and not really have some disruptions, you might experience some issues. But again, I would not take it too much to see if you start to see some issues and then if so revert back to the other driver do a ddu which i usually do with every single portion of graphics drivers you just do it eventually you get used to it and all these weird bells and whistles just start fading away because it was the issues of the install and the install you gotta love it but you know your boy max always got you so everyone thank you so much for staying tuned for this lovely episode of the amd adrenaline software update hopefully we'll be getting a 2021 pretty soon but for right now it seems like in november this is our second edition to the 20.11 series thank you so much have a nice day stay safe stay classy if you're new to the network you can always like share and subscribe it helps me as a creator and if you do who knows maybe lisa sue will send me a 6900 series that would be so freaking cool i would be really appreciate that lisa you know if you want to hook me up you know i'll do an unboxing you can even sign it those really cool ones like the lisa sue editions i really like those they're amazing and they look really cool they're ba yeah just think about it anyways everyone see you later